Hey guys, so um, I look a little rough today. You're just gonna have to overlook that because she's tired. Um, but I made notes, bunch of them, so upset them. bunch of notes to kind of keep me on track today about the things that I want to talk about in this video. I know that before this video, there was like a little bit of clips because I was gonna do this like outside and then um somebody was leaf blowing and stuff and i tried to wait that out but apparently there was like a lot of leaves so we are back in this room giving it our best shot um i'm gonna try to do some different areas but i don't think it really matters what room i'm in because you know it's fine but um the name of this video as you guys can probably see because you clicked on it to watch it um it's real appalachia um I watched a couple of videos on um, TikTok. I don't know if you guys have TikTok. Um, and I watched it go back and forth with like some people who's just trying to pronounce Appalachia. And then I went like down this rabbit hole of like different videos um, about Appalachia. And a lot of it is actually like misinformation. And I also did, like, I mean, I was born and raised here, but I did look up a lot of the things that were being said to make sure that I was not wrong um did my own little research into where i'm from just to make sure because like you don't always know everything about where you're from and stuff i just wanted to make it clear up so i'm not going to talk about what they said or anything but i'm going to kind of give my own information and i did write this down and i have terrible chicken scratch handwriting but i wrote down like my own experience things words whatever to put some more information out there about Appalachia because I don't think there's enough information about it. Um, it'll kind of, you'll kind of see, but I've never heard anybody pronounce it the way that it was pronounced. I understand people call it Appalachian. Um, Appalachian is how we say it. Appalachian makes sense, but this person called it Appalachian. I've never heard it pronounced that way. Um, they said they were from Pennsylvania and that's how they pronounce it. I have no idea. I've never heard that before. So, um, I guess just that depends on where you are and and um, how you would read it, I guess. Um, but we do pronounce it. We do. I mean, I'm not saying that's necessarily wrong. Like, you can say things different ways. That so doesn't really matter. I'm like offended that they called it Appalachian. Um, but anyways, we call it Appalachia. Appalachia. Appalachian. Appa. Appa. Whatever. Appa. Appalachian. So, um, I want to start out with the, um, it says like, well, it, it says like, I'm going to read you a book, but <laughs> the first thing I wanted to say is like, typically people think that people in Appalachia, um, are like really poor and that might be the case. Um, it might be the case anywhere in the world, especially like, you know, we went over this in the other video, like, especially, it's hard right now, but that's not necessarily true. The reason that people think that people in Appalachia are so poor is because a lot of people, well, a lot of media that you find on Appalachia is, is um, more cultured towards people who live, you know, without certain modern, modern things, you know, such as power or television or things like that, which there are a lot of people that live like that still. Um, we don't all, um, obviously. Um, if, and people who choose to do that, usually they, they want to live off grid. It's not, you know, that they couldn't live another way, you know, they just, they choose to live that way. And it takes a lot of money and work to grow your own food and to have your own cattle and have your own animals that you, you know, slaughter and you eat on your own. Um, so that's not really like a, like a poor person thing, um, because it takes a lot to be able to do that, but it's like such a rich thing because to be able to have your own stuff, you know, where you don't have to rely on grocery stores and other, uh, you know, like the other stuff like that. And maybe you can even sell some of your things, excuse me, or trade with your neighbors, you know, to make your own profit or to make, to get what you need. I'm so sorry. Um, but that, that is one of the things, like that's the number one thing really when you look up Appalachia is you see like, um, you know, a lot of the pictures and stuff are older and everything. And I feel like people kind of still think that most of us are, um, are poor. Um, we're, we are, but not in that way. <laughs> so, um, uh, a lot of people think, assume that we're not clean, that, you know, like that's just what you find on the internet you know, and they just 
show not always the best versions of Appalachian people and I'm sure like that's with every every culture every everything um everywhere it, it typically shows you know um the bad things but um you know we still can every year and usually that is something that I'm still learning personally to do it for myself I'm still in the learning process of being able to do it I've never had to sit down and do it for myself but I really want to because I want to be able to pass that down to my kids because I want my kids to be able to know how to do it um and that is something that is a huge thing to pass down through your family here in Appalachia. Um, I'll look at my hair. Um, and, and it's really important, you know, because you can can things. And next year, that's things that you don't have to purchase or make or worry about. You know, um, me and my grandma used to can tomatoes every year. Uh, she canned sausages, little, you know, like homemade sausage patties and stuff. Um, I saw the other day, and now I don't know, don't quote me on this one. I've never seen somebody do it, but I did see this online. Um, somebody canned bread. I don't know. Maybe it works. I would assume it'd probably be soggy, but don't. Yeah, I don't know. Um, if it works, though, I need to know. I need to look into that. But, um, you know, you'll see a lot of people eating canned food. Now, canned t green tomatoes. I don't know if you guys have ever ate fried green tomatoes, but they are superb. They are amazing if you like tomatoes. My husband likes fried green tomatoes, like fried green tomatoes, but he doesn't really care for regular tomatoes. But they don't taste, in my opinion, and in his, they don't really taste similar. Um, the taste is, is different from regular tomatoes and, and green tomatoes. Um, but fried green tomatoes with a little ranch because I'm a ranch girly and everything goes with ranch. All of it. Everything. Um, it's really good. Really, really, really good. Now, both my grandmothers made fried green tomatoes, but my dad's mom made fried green tomatoes. But, like, she, like, every time she fried a vegetable, it was like, I mean, she didn't have teeth. Um, so she would cut them up in little small pieces and stuff. I don't know. Something different. It's different, but it's really good. I, my very first time making fried green tomatoes, which my husband will tell you that I'm a, I'm a decent cook. I will toot my own horn on that one. I'm a decent cook. I learned that from my grandparents, but on both sides, uh, my grandma's and my mother. Um, we're all very decent cooks. Now, I baking, I'm working on it. I'm working on it, okay? If it comes in a box, I got you. If I got to hand make it, it's a hit and a miss. I'm in the process of learning how to make bread. Um, I've made some decent breads. I've made an entire loaf of biscuit. That's how my first bread came out. So it is a learning curve. It is something I'm trying to learn. Um, you know, it's something I want to do. I want to be more, you know. Um, but there was a story behind this. I kind of backtrack a little bit. The first time I made fried green tomatoes, I used flour. Um, yeah, I think you're supposed to use cornmeal. Actually, I paused you're supposed to use cornmeal. But anyways, I, you can make it, I think. I mean, it didn't taste terrible, but it was different. Um, I was, I've not always been a great cook. Um, I used to make enough pasta to feed an entire army. Um, anyway. I don't know, I made that weird face and I got it on camera and I'm eight minutes in and I'm not gonna restart, but I keep listening what's going on in there because I'm nosy um anyways I used to make a ton of pasta I still do make quite a bit of pasta um I have ventured into attempting to make my own pasta that is a whole journey but um anyways I one story that I will say is my husband tells everybody this when they talk about my cooking because like he's got to be like oh she wasn't always good no he's really nice but he does tell um people this when my and I do too because my husband will not or he used to not complain like not complain but he used to not tell me how he felt about things because he didn't want to hurt my feelings but he learned the hard way that if you don't tell me how you feel about it I'm gonna make it again I'm gonna make it again because I'm gonna be like, oh, you really love this. We're gonna do this again. And then he's gotta do it twice. But um, I made soup when we had our first apartment and it was probably the worst soup I've ever seen. I don't know, I couldn't even tell you to be honest with you. I couldn't even, it, soup seems like it's not that hard. I've made soup since then. And I'm just like, I don't know, girl, what'd you do? I don't know. It was like water, it didn't have flavor. The noodles weren't flavored. It was weird, but you learn as you go um something I still cannot manage to do is make gravy 
you know i mean we're just not all we're all cut from different cloths we we know how to cook things i i mean i can make really good meals but there's certain things that i can't make um gravy is not one i just can't do it i don't know why i can make it but it's still very flowery i don't know anyways this was like a little side note but you guys have seen my videos you know that my brain goes okay um so anyways that's things we we like to make our own stuff we like to have our own stuff um to be able to fully sustain and stuff now i don't know if i talked about this in a different like note if i wrote this in a different note or not so i may have to come back to it uh, let me just see let me just go ahead and go do it since it's already on my mind ba -ba 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 -ba. yeah i want to go ahead and skip to this one um so another thing that we like to do is like make obviously our own stuff we just went over that like um soaps and um medicines even um so i'm sure that elderberry is not just a appalachian thing i could be wrong um i know that they do sell it like brand and sell it at pharmacies and stuff but around here you can actually buy it locally where people make it um, where they, I guess, grow elderberry, they make it, make a syrup for it and stuff. And let me tell you, if you don't know what elderberry is, Google that, especially if you have kids or if you're chronic to getting sick or just, just want to do something good for yourself, Google elderberry syrup. Um, it's amazing. I had my children during COVID. I had my kids on elderberry gummies during the pandemic. Um, and it, and it kept them healthy. Um, I did the gummies for them and you can buy those locally also like it is kind of harder to find I guess people to make elderberry gummies um you can get elderberry syrup now listen personally it's a unique flavor it, it is my kids don't like it I'm not a huge fan of it but it works and I've always heard that if the medicine tastes good it ain't gonna work you need it to taste bad because my grandma my mom's mom she used to say she I mean you'd be sitting next to her just <coughs> your throat and she would go get the spoon and you was about to get some robitussin uh a spoonful she didn't me there's no measuring there's no like oh how much does this child at this age and this weight get mm -mm. she'd give you a tablespoon maybe two uh, robitussin <gasps> now robitussin works i will robitussin is great but the taste is horrendous the color should tell you too it's like bright red you ever tasted medicine that was bright red that tasted good? Not really. Not as an adult. I mean, like, I know they made, like, kids stuff, but we don't use um, those anymore. That's a totally separate thing about, like, food dyes and, and the colors and the red dye and the red dye 40, I think, specifically and stuff like that. But that's a different subject. But my point is, I've, as an adult, never seen a, an adult-flavored uh, medicine that tastes good that was red. First of all, I ain't never seen one that tastes good anyway. But anyway um she used to come at you with that rope testing but elderberry syrup is great um another thing that i've personally done and witnessed and seen and grew up with is sunburns if you get really really bad sunburn um i know a lot of people put like aloe vera on it and that can take forever mm -mm. cut a potato cut slices of the potato and put it on your sunburn and literally it pulls the heat from the sunburn out of your skin and it's amazing um Another one's cut onions and put on the bottom of your feet and then you like put a sock on, you know, and you wear it and you sleep all night and it pulls toxins from your feet. Um, another one with the onion is a bee sting. If you put a cut of onion or tobacco, now I've, I've seen both of these things, um, onion or tobacco on the bee sting and it draws it out. Um, and those are both great. So those are things that we, we do. Um, Another thing, um, a lot of people assume that people from Appalachia are not educated. Um, I guess because we do have big, like a lot of us have Southern draws. I don't really know if my, I don't think mine's that bad. Like, I don't think I have much of an accent. Um, but then some of you who's watching me from who knows where may think, wow, she's got, you know, she talks like cornbread. I might talk like cornbread. Um, but um, we are not uneducated. Um, not all of us anyway. Um, now... We, and and I wouldn't even say like even like people aren't uneducated we're educated in different ways you know we're very smart in the ways of like um it, not just school you know like typically speaking as in you would expect like you know 
for educatedness. Um, we are very self-sufficiently smart, um, as in like we know what to do to take care of ourselves to survive. We know that we need to grow food so that we're not dependent on other people. We know that we need to, you know, um, to have our own food source and, and, and animals and things like that. Um, not all of us do it. No, not all of us live that way. Um, but a lot of us do. Um, there is, and I only did a little one because I want to do this so bad. I want to do like a whole dark history of Appalachia thing, like a folklore thing. But at the same time, I was born and raised in Appalachia and I'm like, I don't know if I should be talking about that. And if you guys are, slam the door in the hallway and I can literally hear them talking um which is crazy but anyways so uh at first I thought they were in here and I was like what anyways okay so sorry 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 um anyways so there is a lot of dark history with Appalachia and it's super interesting I find it super interesting, but at the same time, I, it freaks me out um, because it's real. It's it's legit. You know, it's not like ghost hunters. Like, you're not watching somebody make up stuff. Like, it is actually legit. And everybody that I know from Appalachia has had some type of situation that they've experienced. Um, one Number one thing I can tell you is if you ever visit Appalachia, um, and, and you guys may be watching it live in Appalachia, but I'm like, if you don't and you come to Appalachia, and I don't know why you would be, but, like, don't be in the woods after dark don't there ain't nothing you need in the woods after dark okay if you rent a cabin and you be in the woods after dark go in you don't need to be outside don't don't be outside after dark um because you're in the woods and you hear somebody calling your name yes you do hear that but no you don't no you don't turn around go home go the other way don't you hear somebody crying no you don't mm -mm. no you don't leave um these are real. These have a name. I ain't saying the name. If you know, you know. Um, but it's all very real. I, I would love to dive down that and like explain that and go through that. And I may um, kind of touch base on that in another video because I think it'd be really cool to to get like to, to talk about stuff like that out there. Um, I'm kind of into like a little bit of spooky stuff. So um, anyways, um, and then the next one says like we know how to heal um and stuff like take care of our own like making stuff and stuff like that which was like the elderberry and the and stuff like that um so Appalachia is known for bluegrass but honey it's not in the water um a lot of us uh, still are musically inclined a lot of our families still sit and pick and play and sing together a lot of us um do this and then when I say a lot of us unfortunately it ain't me I it it, it ain't in the water that I drink uh, unfortunately, I love to sing, but I don't think other people love it when I sing. Uh, I was skipped over on that one. Um, but a lot of people do that. That's how they, you know, like Sunday afternoons or whatever, you know, Sunday dinner is still a big thing. Um, so you meet at like granny's house and you sit outside on the porch and you pick and you play and you sing and have a good time. Don't open the door. Anyways, um, they just want to know what I'm doing or who I'm talking to probably is what they're wondering. My husband is in there with them. Like, they're okay. They're just nosy. I wanted to say that so you guys didn't think I was like shutting them out. Like, they're, my husband's in there. Um, and then, do, 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 let's see. Okay, another thing that I still do from time to time is, well, I'll say from time to time, but we hang a line. We're at, um, actually at my mom's house, there is one built in and it's built and it's a line and you take clothespins and you, you know, put your stuff out to dry. I will still put my clothes out to dry sometimes, even though I have a dryer, you know, I have a dryer cause like you can't always put your stuff out to dry. But now my specific thing that I like, cause my husband doesn't really like his clothes always like his certain clothes out on the line because it does make certain fabric fabrics kind of stiff. Um, but it just smells so much better and it just feels so much better in most instances like blue jeans It doesn't typically seem to do very well for in my experience. Um, but maybe I maybe I need to put something else in there, you know to do that, but um So 
that is something that we do now. I like to do covers, blankets. Um, I am a blanket person. I'm a big girl, so it, it's not like I'm chilly. I just like I just like to have it. Um, a, bl a good blanket. Um, I do get cold, but I also have hot flashes, so I've got to have the fan on me, but a blanket. I don't know. I don't know. It don't make sense to my husband either or me. So, but I have to have it on, and I have to have a blanket as well. So, um. And then the last part of this is I just have a couple Appalachian words that I thought were cool and I use them and then I realize that there are many other words for these things so that they're probably not used that much. Um, and I just said chili was one. Like chili's not the word. Um, Irish is the word, but it chi means chili. Like it's Irish outside, it's chili outside. Um, I didn't, like I don't know if you guys use this one or not, but I don't know why did that but um um ill like I, i'm ill or she's ill and like i guess typically you would think if somebody said she's ill you think she was sick no she mad she's mad um manpower usually i've heard manpower be used um if you physically have to do something like if you physically have to move something or if it's really heavy or if it's hard and like you know a man or woman has to move it then it's a lot of manpower um, nary means not any, um, there was nary a one, I've heard that so many times, um, and then hull, I didn't, um, think too much about this, my husband gave me this one, um, no, or hull, not null, hull, um, is to shell, like to shell a nut, um, like walnuts, kind of what it makes me think of when I say, um, hull, um, run means creek. Um, like there's a good run over there or the run goes through there or something like that. That means Creek. And then this one I just thought you guys would enjoy because I've heard this from a lot of older people, but I've never really used, I mean, I've never said this one myself. Um, but I have heard people say it and it's a whistle pig. Do you guys know what a whistle pig is? It's a groundhog, a groundhog, a whistle pig. Um, and then holler. I think I've touched on this one before. I live in a holler. Um, so I've heard hollers referred to in different ways. So it's like where the mountains come back and then they connect back here. It's like, whoop, you know? Um, and usually, like in my instance, when it, when the holler was made, my family lived in it. So it's like a family holler. It's like, you know, this person holler or whatever. So yeah, that's just a quick video. And I feel like I talk too fast, but... Oh well, somebody said that they liked my voice and it was calming and thank you. Um, but they want me to do ASMR. I don't have, I don't think I have the equipment to do that. Like I wouldn't be opposed to it because I even watch some of those videos. They're pretty calming. Um, but I feel like it would just be like kind of gross at the same time. Not uh, just because of me, just, just like. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe maybe am I not supposed to video my face? Maybe I'm not supposed to video my face. I don't know. Um, whoops. And then I was just like make weird different sounds and, and do stuff like that. And then the one with the beads, I've seen this one where like they have a whole mood set, right? Like it's like blue light, it's dark. They got like little backlights and they got this bowl of water with like beads in it and a spoon. And this sounds weird if you've never seen it. I understand what you're thinking. I get it. You're thinking I'm crazy. It's fine. But the sounds that it makes, it's just really soothing. If you've never seen ASMR, um, it's really soothing, I think. Uh, most of them are, but I don't know if I have the right things. I do want to get a little microphone thing that you clip to you and stuff and it really just like drowns out other sounds and stuff and I think that would be like a really ASMR type thing to have. I'm not opposed to it. I guess I could give it a shot once or twice. Maybe we'd see if we like it. But um that's it for this video. I hope you guys liked it and give this a like and if you're not subscribed please subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.